Deshaun Watson has been cleared of all charges. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday was an unbelievably great day for the Houston Texans. Have you guys seen these recent rumors? This video is just going to be about Deshaun Watson and the different trade options, the trade scenarios that could happen between a multitude of teams that have already been rumored to be in the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. But my goodness, if you are a Houston Texans fan, you're at least, at minimum, getting back two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and a really good young player. Let's remember what the um, Seattle Seahawks got for Russell Wilson. They got two first-round picks, two second-round picks, and Noah Fant. So you would think more for a younger quarterback, Deshaun Watson, who's still under contract for multiple years. The unique thing about Deshaun Watson, he is under contract through the 2025 season. He signed an extension and then basically immediately the next year demanded a trade from the Houston Texans. Then all the assault stuff happens. He takes the year off. The NFL says, let's let this go away. And now it looks like it's going away. He just has to face some civil, civil lawsuits at this point. But the grand jury declined to indict Deshaun Watson on the sexual assault charges. Let's talk about the major teams that could be players for Deshaun Watson. We've got Daniel Jeremiah reporting the expectation around the league that the Seattle Seahawks will trade for Deshaun Watson. It does make sense. You get two first round picks, you get two second round picks for Russell Wilson, but more importantly, you've already got the offensive infrastructure in a DK Metcalf, in a Tyler Lockett. You would have to either sign a good offense, a good left tackle, good offensive line. You still need the offensive line, but you've got two really good receivers. You would have to, again, the Houston Texans are the huge winners right now with Deshaun Watson not having to face any charges because his trade value, all these teams, it's crazy. If you're the Seahawks, you're thinking of this, you'd ha you'd at least have to trade two first, you know, your first round pick. Actually, Seattle only has one first round pick because they had none. Now they have one. That would be an interesting trade. I don't know actually if Seattle would have enough to offer. Like who is a young player that Seattle would have to offer? I'm not exactly sure, but another team, like the thing with Seattle, they their offense is ready-made, but I don't know if they're going to have the best package. If you're Houston, you just sit back and wait for the best package. And if I'm Houston, I would look for the most trade picks or the most draft picks possible in this trade. The most draft picks, the Carolina Panthers, also a team rumored to be heavily interested in trading for Deshaun Watson. They have their first round pick this year. They have their first round pick next year. They've got second round picks. Maybe Christian McCaffrey gets thrown in, but he's got a big contract and he's been injured the past few years. I don't know how a team like Houston would, you know, maybe would probably, if I was Houston, I probably wouldn't want Christian McCaffrey. I would want all of your draft picks. So you look at a team like Carolina, it's interesting. I think DJ Moore is one of the most underrated players in the NFL. He is a true wide receiver one. He just got stuck playing with a really bad quarterback last year in Sam Darnold. Probably the worst starter in the league. And then you also have Robbie Anderson. You also have two really good young high upside defensive players. They've invested into the defense. The Carolina Panthers have the last two drafts. They've, you know, two top 10 picks, both spent on defensive players. So uh, when it comes to Carolina, they definitely, it seems like, have the assets, but it just comes down to, you know, what is it actually going to take? Is it going to take three first-round picks to get Deshaun Watson? And, and that brings me to my next team, the Philadelphia Eagles, who are probably the best trade fit for Deshaun Watson when you look at the resources they currently have. They could give the Houston Texans all three of their first round picks this year and their first round pick next year. That's four first round picks. And it's not like you're giving them, you know, first round picks three or four years out, which teams will never do. Those picks are off the table. There's too much uncertainty. But I'm saying they have three first round picks this year. You give them those three. I think it's pick number 17 or 16, 17, and 19. I think that's what Philadelphia has. And then maybe even one next year for Deshaun Watson. You're going to have to break the bank for this dude. You're going to really have to break the bank. And Philadelphia is in a situation where you have the draft capital this year, three first-round picks to do it. Another team I haven't seen talked about at all, the New York Giants. So the New York Giants right now have the number five overall pick, the number seven overall pick, and you know they have their first round pick next year. But it's like, if you're the Giants, I would personally, 
it's so tough to like you cannot but you're desperate like I don't know would you give up the number five and number seven overall pick for Deshaun Watson that is a crazy scenario. That is a, It's like you do have Saquon Barkley, you've got Kenny Galladay, you've got some weapons on the offensive side, but it's just like how desperate are the Giants for a franchise quarterback? That's really what it comes down to. How desperate are they? The Giants could also say, listen, we'll give you the fifth overall pick. We want to keep our seventh overall pick, but we'll give you a first rounder next year. We'll give you a second rounder this year and a second rounder next year, and then maybe a younger player that you like as well. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, depending on who that is, that's you know to be determined but the Giants is someone I haven't heard a lot about but it's just like you're looking at, at their team they clearly don't trust Daniel Jones there's been talk of them bringing in Mitch Trubisky I'm pondering in my head maybe they say you know we have the fifth and seventh overall pick we can trade one of those picks that's a huge asset if you are Houston compared to Philadelphia their you know their first round picks aren't until the late teens so that's another situation to look at Another team that's it, that seems to be doing their homework, it was reported the Cleveland Browns have done a lot of work on Deshaun Watson and are now regarded as a wild card entry into this expanding trade market. There also was a report that the Browns are in on Amari Cooper. So I'm a Browns fan. This is crazy. I want to get into this really quickly. The Cleveland Browns. When it comes to Deshaun Watson, it's a bidding war. You're going to have to give up your first round pick this year. You're going to have to give up your first round pick next year. You're going to have to give up your second round pick this year and next year. You can do it with the salary cap because you would trade Baker Mayfield's contract. He's only under, under contract for this year. I think he's at like around an 18 million cap hit, maybe 21 million. I don't know the exact number, but you can make it work for Deshaun Watson. And it's at the point right now. If you can trade as much draft capital as possible, keep as many young players if you're the Browns, maybe go after Amari Cooper if you can somehow figure out a cap situation to where it could work. You get Amari Cooper, you are still thin at receiver because what I want the Browns to do, if they cannot get Deshaun Watson, I would say get Amari Cooper, draft a receiver in the first round, and pair like an Amari Cooper with Garrett Wilson. That's a super team. You know, now Baker Mayfield, you know, would, you know, th that's a tough situation. You want to upgrade from Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield's not the worst quarterback in the world. Him being healthy is going to be, you know, helpful to the Browns. But if there is a situation where you could trade for Deshaun Watson, I would 1,000% do it. This is an elite, borderline top five quarterback in his prime who's absolutely looks like he's raring to go in the NFL. So if I'm the Browns, I'd be very interested. I just think the Browns might get outbid by some of these other teams considering their first round pick isn't until pick number 13. And then it comes down to what else do you have to give up? Like if I'm the Browns, I'm not trading Denzel Ward. You know, I'm not trading some of these guys. Also, there was a report that the Browns, that Jadavian Clowney is going to cost too much money for the Browns. That would be rough. Because then it's a situation where it's like, now you need a pass rusher opposite Miles Garrett. But the Browns being in this is so interesting. We've also got a report on the Pittsburgh Steelers. It says the Steelers won't be pursuing Deshaun Watson. So kind of interesting. Could you imagine Deshaun Watson on the Steelers? Like, I don't know what you got to give up for this guy. It's both your, you know, your first round pick this year, next year, your second round pick this year, next year. But the Steelers, Deshaun Watson, Najee Harris, you do have a patchwork offensive line. Maybe you sign someone in free agency, but think about it. Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson, oh my goodness. With that defense led by TJ Watt, maybe you draft a corner. Well, you wouldn't be able to draft anyone because you'd be trading all your draft picks for Deshaun Watson. But the Steelers, this is a report. Who knows how true it is? You'd think if you're the Steelers, you would do your homework. I mean, you're desperate for a quarterback. What are your really your options right now? You've got this really good defense. You, you don't, you've got this interesting window. You don't want to kill it. So if I'm the Steelers, I would do my homework on this. I don't know how true this report is saying they won't be interested, but it is a situation where if you're not prepared to give up multiple first round assets, you're not going to be involved because the Houston Texans have so many different teams, Carolina, Seattle, kind of the front runners, rumored the front runners right now for Deshaun Watson. We will see what happens. Maybe the Browns enter as a wild card. And how about this interesting rumor? The Buccaneers have done homework on Baker Mayfield in the event he becomes available in trade. So if Deshaun Watson gets traded to the Browns, Baker Mayfield may be going to the Buccaneers. I don't know what the Browns could get for Baker Mayfield on a one-year deal at this point. Maybe 
maybe a second round pick. I don't think so. Probably a third rounder. But if you're the Browns, you're able to get Deshaun Watson. You're able to get Amari Cooper. Somehow make it work with the cap situation. You would love to get a second round asset back and then be able to draft a receiver in the second round to pair with Amari Cooper. If you guys know what I'm saying, because you have to cut Jarvis Landry. You have to save the $14 million if you're trading for Deshaun Watson and his cap hit at this point. So you would really only have Donovan Peoples-Jones as a legit option. You need two receivers. Maybe you get Amari Cooper for a third or fourth round pick. He does have a pretty big cap hit. And then maybe you get a second or third round pick back for Baker Mayfield in a trade with the Buccaneers. To that un, that'll enable you. That'll give you the draft capital. I love this receiver class in 2022 to draft a receiver in the second round. And now you've got a full blown super team with Deshaun Watson, with Amari Cooper, with Nick Chubb, with Kareem Hunt, with a top three offensive line in football, with Denzel Ward, with uh, Miles Garrett. You know, probably at that point you wouldn't be able to resign Jadavian Clowney. There's just not enough money. But, you know, maybe you draft someone. Either way, that would be crazy for the Browns. Every team has to that needs a quarterback must do their due diligence on this. This is a superstar that's available that wants to be traded. The Houston Texans are trading him. And the real winners in this situation, number one, well, the real winner is whoever trades for Deshaun Watson. But really, the other real winners, the Houston Texans. Because the Houston Texans can sit back and say, we're tanking this year. We're going to get so many... <coughs> Oh, excuse me. We're going to get so many assets back for Deshaun Watson. Two first round picks, two second round picks. We can draft CJ Strout next year or Bryce Young. Get him a great offensive tackle because we're getting top picks. Wild card team that could enter the sweep, the sweep, Deshaun Watson sweep, sweepstakes, excuse me. The New York Giants. Fifth pick, seventh pick, what do they do? You could also say the Jets, but they invested the second overall pick in Zach Wilson, so I still think they like him. They want to grow with him. The Giants really do not have a quarterback. They're like, do we bring back Daniel Jones? Do we bring in Mitch Trubisky to compete with Daniel Jones? What a mess that would be. You know, we heard about the Giants possibly being involved in a Russell Wilson trade, but remember, guys, think about the trade uh, the the, the uh, package that it took to get Russell Wilson, two first round picks, two second round picks, and a young player. Uh, and that's like the ninth overall pick and the 40th overall pick. It's going to take even more. That's why I bring up a team like uh, the Eagles. Like, are you going to need three first round picks, four first round picks to get Deshaun Watson? Or maybe they want young players too. Uh, it is a crazy amount to ask. And at this point, it seems like Deshaun Watson is going to be cleared of everything uh, and ready to go for the 2022 season, and we are going to get a league-altering trade at some point this offseason, and you know what? I envy Houston Texan, Texans fans right now because they are going to get so many assets. I love assets. I love getting first-round picks. This Houston Texans team, it's going to be unbelievable. It's going to be unbelievable how many assets that they get, but just wanted to do this quick story on Deshaun Watson. Actually, let me just see if there's any news right now. We got some Melvin Gordon news. The Broncos are interested in re-signing him. The Saints are restructuring it. This, it it's, I feel so bad for Saints fans. Saints are restructuring Marshawn Lattimore's contract. That's about the sixth contract they've had to restructure just to get under the salary cap. Amari Cooper, ESPN Jeremy Fowler reports at least five teams have talked, talked to the Cowboys about Amari Cooper. That is the latest news. Deshaun Watson wanted to make this video all about him because it is an earth-changing type deal that could be happening with one of these teams. The two front runners right now, just based off reading off the tea leagues, tea, tea leaves, it is going to be the Carolina Panthers and the Seattle Seahawks as the two front runners. But again, it's whoever offers the most. Who's going to be that team to throw in the extra first round pick? Who's going to be that team? Maybe Houston wants a young player from a certain team. Uh, you know, it's just who gets lucky and who gets Deshaun Watson. It will be crazy to follow, guys. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.